my channel and welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen and I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and I'm on the WW Blue Plan. It's Monday, so you know what that means. It is meal prep. I have three fall inspired comfort food and absolutely incredible delicious recipes to share with you today. So if you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that little subscribe button and the bell next to it so you're notified whenever new videos are uploaded. I do a meal prep pretty much every single Monday so you don't wanna miss out. If you love meal preps, give this one a big thumbs up. It means a lot to me and it really truly helps out my channel so please give it a thumbs up if you enjoy meal preps. Make sure you're checking out the description box down below where you're going to find my website where all of today's recipes are as well as instructions, points, and calories, and the link, of course, to the original recipe and this particular video. So definitely check out my website down below. You'll also find my nutrition coaching website. I highly recommend having me determine your macros and calories. It really just helps you kind of know where to land every day with calories and points. I have one-on-one -on -one coaching and group coaching, a little bit of everything. So definitely check out my nutrition coaching website down below as well. Discount codes, links to my favorite things, including the products I shared with you today, Thrive and Dax and Nutstop are all linked down below. So definitely spend a little bit of time in that description box. Head on over and join us on Facebook. We'd love to have you be part of our awesome community over there. And without further ado, we have three fall inspired, warm weather, cozy up recipes to share. So let's jump right in. Fall is in full swing at the Clayton house and I am feeling fall vibes for this week's meal prep. So all three recipes are comfort food, fall-esque. They are going to be incredible, starting with breakfast. Breakfast is a pumpkin chocolate chip oatmeal breakfast bar. I'm excited for this, perfect ingredients. You could pair this with eggs, bacon, sausage, and some fruit and have a very low point, well-rounded breakfast. So let me show you what's in the pumpkin chocolate chip oatmeal breakfast bars. First, you're going to need some rolled oats and some oat flour. Now I picked mine up off of the Thrive Market. You guys know I love Thrive. Their products are 30% less expensive than the traditional grocery store, and they have thousands upon thousands of products you can't find anywhere else, or if you can, they're going to cost you a little bit more than on the Thrive Market. I love Thrive. It ships to your doorstep for free, and when you join Thrive, you get a free gift up to a $24 value just for joining. So check that out. The link is down below. A lot of what you're going to see today is from Thrive, including my rolled oats and also the organic oat flour. Now, if you don't have oat flour on hand, you can simply put regular oats in your food processor and pulse them into a flour. That's basically what this is. I just like to buy oat flour and have it on hand. It's just easier. So I have that. This is also from Thrive. This is organic coconut palm sugar. We're going to use coconut sugar as our sweetener. I picked up the Skinny Sticks Pure Maple Syrup from the Thrive Market. And then you'll need a can of pumpkin, coconut oil, baking powder, baking soda, some spices. First, we're going to be using the Dax pumpkin spice. You guys know this is my favorite spice of all time. My favorite spice in the world, my favorite spice from Dax. It is so good. It is honey, ginger, cinnamon, nutmeg, all rolled into one, and it is the Dax pumpkin spice. All natural ingredients, no MSG, no salt. I love Dax. I own every single one of their seasonings. Definitely get your hands on this. I'm going to be substituting the nutmeg and the cloves in this recipe with this because it is that incredibly good. I do have 10% off and free shipping for Dax. Head on over and check them out. They have tons of spices. Like I said, you can't go wrong with any of them and you can get 10% off and free shipping and support a small business. Definitely add the pumpkin spice to your cart though because it's the best. And then I'm also going to pop in, I think just a little bit extra cinnamon, just because I like that extra cinnamon. And then you're also going to need some vanilla extract. And by the way, this is a killer price on Thrive. An egg, 
And then you'll need some chopped pecans. Mine are from Nutstop. Again, such another great small business. Super, super affordable. I do have 10% off for these guys as well. It is linked down below for you. And then we're going to add some Lily's chocolate chips to these because we want chocolate. And lastly, you're just going to need a little bit of salt. So let's get started on breakfast. So we're gonna start with the wet ingredients for our pumpkin bar. So I have a medium sized bowl here, three tablespoons of melted coconut oil. I just pop that in my microwave literally for 20 seconds and it melts down. We are going to add some vanilla extract, about a teaspoon. You guys know I don't measure it. I just usually pop it in there. And then I have three tablespoons of coconut sugar one egg so we need to pop in an egg so we'll do that make sure you don't get the shell and then one cup of pumpkin puree so i have some left over so what i normally do is just throw it in my refrigerator it's great for your pets if they have stomach issues if their tummies hurt or they have bathroom issues and then sometimes i like to put it into a smoothie to make a pumpkin smoothie so it won't go to waste i'll just go ahead and pop it in my fridge and then lastly i have my syrup here and i'm going to do three tablespoons of the maple syrup stir this all together till it's nice and combined and then we'll start on the dry ingredients Next up is the dry ingredient. So you can see our wet is nice and combined. So we are going to go ahead and start with our baking soda and our baking powder. I'm just going to add this in as we go with the baking soda. We need half of a teaspoon. So this is a half of a teaspoon right here. So there's our baking soda. And then we need a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. So I'm just going to fill this up halfway and add that. And then I'm not going to measure the spices. I'm just going to pop in about a teaspoon of cinnamon and the same with the pumpkin pie, just because I really like it flavorful for me. I want these bars to scream fall to scream pumpkin. So I added quite a bit of seasoning. And then I have one and a half cups of, or I'm sorry, one and a quarter cups of my rolled oats and then half of a cup of oat flour. Now the recipe says an additional two tablespoons of oat flour. I'm going to wait and see how dry this batter is without that and if we need it we'll add it and then of course we want just a little pinch of salt because the salt brings out the sweetness one quarter cup of the chopped pecans and three servings of lilies and I just weighed that out on my food scale so now I'm going to mix this together and like I said if it's still too wet I will go ahead and pop in those other two tablespoons of oat flour so the batter is still a bit wet so there is two tablespoons of additional of oat flour. Give that a good stir and then we're ready to put this into our prepared baking dish. So I have a, a nine by nine or so baking dish here. You just want a square baker. Some nonstick cooking spray. I'm going to go ahead and spray that really, really well because we certainly don't want anything sticking to it. Doesn't this look so good? So I'm just going to spread my batter into my baking dish. We wanna make sure it's nice and even. And you do have the option of adding some additional pecans and chocolate chips to the top before it goes into the oven. Just make sure you calculate in those points because I am not going to do that. So the points I'm sharing is without any additional chocolate chips or pecans added other than what we mixed into the batter. Look at how delicious this looks. This is going to a 350 degree oven for 20 to 30 minutes or basically until the edges have browned. The recipe says hers took about 25. So let's get these in the oven. Look at how good these bars look. I am excited for these. I just pulled these out of the oven. I'm going to let them cool for just a couple minutes and then we're going to cut them into serving sizes and I'll give you points and calories. So here are the bars. So what I did is cut them into 12 bars. So this is, I mean, this is a good sized bar and my plan is to pair this with some eggs for sure because it's zero points a little bit of protein and then you could also pop some turkey bacon or sausage in the microwave or oven and have that for a little extra protein and substance but these actually have a good amount of protein they're filling their real whole ingredients so by cutting these bars into 12 so that's a good size bar it is five points on both the blue 
and the green plan and four points on purple and each bar is only 137 calories so it's interesting that ww math five points for 137 calories so be mindful of that but yes great way to start breakfast very fall so yeah this is breakfast <laughs> For lunch this week, another fall vibe, cool weather, comfort food, buffalo chicken mac and cheese. I have been craving mac and cheese, and I thought how fun to add some buffalo chicken to it, give it kind of a little bit of spice. So I'm excited for lunches, so let me show you what's in our recipe. First, you're going to need pasta. You guys know I always use the Fiber Gourmet. I decided to go with the light penne pasta this time. You can pick this up off of the Net Trition website. In fact, I just placed an order this morning, so all of the shapes are in stock. They have elbows, penne, rotini, and a spaghetti or linguine noodle. You can have two ounces dry for two points. Most pastas is two ounces dry for five to six points. It's amazing, it's delicious, it's the best pasta. It's only 100 calories for two ounces versus 210 of traditional pasta. 25 grams of fiber versus two grams of fiber, 17 net carbs versus 41, big difference in carbs. And it also has seven grams of protein per serving. It's a lot of pasta for two points, you guys. Fiber Gourmet, the only pasta we buy, hence why I just ordered literally an entire case off of Nutrition. So definitely head over and pick this up. My recipe points are calculated using Fiber Gourmet. And again, I just opted for the penne shape. I think that'll be really good with the buffalo chicken. You're also going to need some oil. I have avocado oil, chicken broth, low fat or fat free milk. Buffalo sauce of your choice. I'm gonna use the Noble Made Medium Buffalo. This one just has clean ingredients and I did pick this up off of Thrive Market. You'll need salt and pepper. Of course, some chicken breast. And then I have onion powder, garlic powder, and parsley. And lastly, some light shredded cheese. I'm just using the Trader Joe's Light Three Cheese Blend. Let's make some buffalo chicken pasta. So the first step is to cut up your chicken. You can see that I did it into little cubes here, and then we are just going to season it up. So I'm gonna start with just a little bit of salt, pepper, and then I have garlic powder, and I'm just going to put about a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of onion powder, and about a teaspoon of dried parsley. Again, you can go by the recipe, which will be on my website, or you can just wing it like I do. And then we're going to give this a stir. We wanna make sure the chicken gets nice and coated in all of the seasoning. So you're going to want quite a large pot. I'm actually going to use a stock pot. To that, I went ahead and added one tablespoon of avocado oil. When that's nice and warm, we're going to add in our chicken and let it sizzle and cook until it's nice and brown. So I've let my chicken cook for about five minutes. It's cooked all the way through. So next I'm going to add in one and a half cups of the low fat milk and one and a half cups of chicken broth. I just put them both in this big measuring pitcher. And then I'm going to stir. We're gonna let this come to a bit of a boil before we add in our pasta. Once it starts to boil, we're going to go ahead and add in the entire pack of pasta. Now the Fiber Gourmet cooks a little faster than traditional pasta. So I'm just going to keep my eye on it, turn the heat down a bit and just let it simmer here until the pasta is cooked thoroughly. Our pasta is cooking right along. It is just about done. I think I'm going to pair this with some corn. So let me show you how I'm going to put together my meal prep containers. So I have this bag of Simple Truth organic corn. So what I'm going to do is just put that in the small compartment of my meal prep. Now I am going to San Diego on Thursday. So I'm going to prep four days so that I can have it for lunch today and then Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. And then there'll be two servings left over because the recipe makes six. So I'm going to divide the corn though by four and I'll just fill it completely in these four meal prep containers. And corn is zero points on blue and purple and it's two to three points on green depending on how much corn you use. So I'm just going to divide that evenly among four containers. Pasta. 
pasta is done. So we're going to add in a quarter cup of buffalo sauce. Now again, I'm using the Noble Maid just because the ingredients are nice and clean. It is a little on the spicy side, so I'm not going to go too crazy. Next time I would definitely buy the mild. This one is the medium. So I'm going to add my quarter of a cup and stir that together. And then I have one full cup of the shredded cheese, but we only want half of that into the pasta directly. So I'm just going to put one cup of of the cheese in. We're gonna reserve the other cup because we top our pasta with that when it's ready. So we're ready to do the meal prep containers. This looks so delicious. So what I'm going to do is scoop it into my four containers, one of these big ladles at a time. The recipe makes six servings, so in a separate storage container for leftovers, I will add one ladle as well, two more times for a total of six servings. So I have my four meal preps. Now we'll put two ladles worth in a storage container and continue going until we have equally filled four containers and the storage container for the additional two servings. So I have my four meal preps, two extra servings in a to-go container or a storage container. And now we are going to take the other one cup of cheese and divide it evenly over the top of our six servings of pasta. And here is lunch. This looks absolutely incredible. And then I have two more servings of the pasta here that we can just have whenever. I don't know that my husband will eat it simply because it is probably pretty spicy, but we shall see. You guys will see this in a what I eat in a day. So I'll be able to give you an honest review of this recipe and its spiciness. So four points, you can have one sixth of the pasta for six smart points on both blue and purple. And then it's eight points on green because you have to account for the chicken. Now, if you're on the purple plan and you use a zero point pasta, you can save one point and it would make it five points on the purple plan. It is 322 calories for just the pasta and then an additional 70 calories or so for the corn. So it's about a 400 calorie lunch, which is not bad at all. And it is actually packed with quite a bit of protein between the chicken and the pasta. So I'm excited for this. And again, you guys will get my honest review in Wednesdays, what I eat in a day. For a snack this week, a sweet treat. We're continuing on with all things fall and we're gonna go with apple muffins. I'm so excited for these. I've been wanting apple something as well. Of course, it's fall. So let me show you what's in our muffins. We're going to need rolled oats, unsweetened applesauce, and again, both my oats and applesauce are from Thrive. You guys definitely check it out. It is so worth having a membership because the prices and the selection is incredible. So check that out down below. We are gonna use some of the brand new Lily's Butterscotch Baking Chips. This is going to be an excellent addition. I'm feeling caramel apple, how about you? And also, baking soda. Again, some maple syrup, some salt. We're using Medjool dates, and again, these are from NetStop. I do not count points for dates because I do not count points for dried fruit if there's no added sugar. And of course, it's controversial on whether or not you should count points for dates. So. We're not gonna count points, so if you'd want to, you'll need to recalculate the points of this recipe because I did not add anything in for the dates. I'm using three Granny Smith apples, mine are small, so I'm using three of them. And of course, we're going to need a couple of eggs. So let's make some apple muffins. So we need to grate our apples. I have never grated apples, so this is gonna be interesting. So I pulled out a large cutting board and just a little handheld grater here. And basically what we're going to do, skin on, is great our apples we want about three apples worth or about one to two cups total of grated apple so i guess that's what we're doing like i said i've never done this before so i'm just going to grate away until i've done all three apples so i don't know if i'm doing something wrong but this is not really working for me i mean i'm getting just a very big mess and kind of a interesting texture on the apple. So we are adding all of these ingredients into a blender. So what I'm gonna do is just chop these up. 
chop them up finely. They're going into the blender anyways. So if you have tips or tricks, or maybe you have a suggestion for anyone else who wants to recreate this recipe, leave it in the comments because me and this grater, epic fail. is going into a high speed blender and that's going to puree down and make the batter for our muffins. So I have two cups of rolled oats, so we'll add those. I have one quarter cup of the maple syrup and I have one half of a cup of unsweetened applesauce. And then I pitted eight medjool dates, which is what the recipe called for, or three quarters of a cup of dates, two eggs, and you saw I was smart this time and cracked them into a bowl separately not to get a messy shell in my batter. And then we, I'm going to add about a half of a teaspoon of salt and then one full teaspoon of baking soda. And then we're gonna blend this together and that is going to create the batter for our muffins. You guys, I almost forgot the apples. We're making apple muffins, Jen, so add the apples. Okay, so there are my chunked up Granny Smith apples. I like to add a tart apple to a sweet muffin. I just like that contrast of that sour sweet. So now let's blend it up. So I went ahead and pulled out my muffin pan and sprayed it with some nonstick cooking spray. I also grabbed out my large cookie scoop. I will link these down below. I just bought these off of Amazon. Here is our batter. It looks really delicious. So our goal is 12 muffins. So I'm just going to take my large scoop and plunk it into my muffin container and I can go back and add a little bit more if I have enough batter. It's better to underfill than to overfill and run out of batter. So I am going to make sure that I get at least 12 muffins and then we'll get these into the oven. I have it preheating at 350 degrees. Here are our 12 apple muffins. These are going in at 350 for 15 to 18 minutes. And then when they come out and they're nice and hot, we'll pop on some butterscotch chips. Apple muffins are out of the oven. Oh my gosh, my house smells like fall. I'm literally so excited. So before these cool, I'm going to pop a couple of these Lily's butterscotch baking chips. You guys, these are super, super good onto the muffins about four or five, so it's gonna be zero points worth of the butterscotch chips, but I think this is going to give these muffins more of like a caramel apple vibe because the butterscotch will kind of taste caramely with the apples, so we shall see, but I'm going to pop in four or five butterscotch chips into each muffin, let these cool, and I'll be back to show you what the completed muffin looks like, give you points and calories. Look at how amazing these muffins look. I can't wait for these. This would be really good as a snack with maybe some type of protein, like a hard boiled egg or a cheese stick or a meat stick. I can't wait to snack on these all week. I know my husband is going to love them as well. So these are awesome. They are three smart points per muffin on both the blue and green plan and only one point on purple because you don't have to account for the oats. 163 calories per little apple muffin. So not bad at all, you guys. These look incredible. I just wanna smell my house for the next hour while it permeates with this apple muffin smell because it is definitely fall vibes. So that is my snack for the week. Thank you so much for joining me on this week's meal prep. I hope you are as excited about these recipes as I am. Down in the description box is my website where you can find all of my recipes as well as my nutrition coaching website, links and discount codes to the things I shared with you today as well as all of my other favorites and the link again to head over and join me on Facebook. We'd love to have you come over and join us there. Make sure you thumbs up this video if you enjoyed it and if you're new to my channel, thank you again so much for hanging out with me today. Make sure you are subscribed and your bell notification is turned on. I do these every single Monday so you don't want to miss out. Thank you guys again so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!